we can use topology to make a quantum computer work. Now, topology is the word that mathematicians use when they want to describe the properties of objects which remain unchanged if we smoothly deform the object without tearing it. Topology is relevant to quantum computation because we would like the way a quantum computer processes its protected information to remain invariant if we deform the quantum computer by introducing some noise or error. Now, physicists have known for a long time, for decades, that there are physical interactions that have a topological character. For example, I can transport an electron around a tube of magnetic flux. And that will modify the quantum state of that electron, even though the electron never enters the tube in a way that depends on the enclosed magnetic flux. And that modification of the electron state is unchanged if I deform the trajectory that the electron followed. All that really matters is a topological property that the electron wrapped once around the flux tube. Now, we know more exotic types of such topological interactions that can potentially occur for particles in two-dimensional systems, which we call, we call these particles non-abelian anions. So it turns out if you have many non-abelian anions, there is a very large number of possible quantum states for those particles. And all of those states locally look the same. They differ only in the collective properties of many anions. And that's just the type of encoding of physical information that we would like to hide the physical state from the environment so a quantum computation can work. And not only that, we can process this information in a simple way, simple in principle, by exchanging the particles, which changes the many particle quantum state of many anions. So we can envision operating what Kitai have called a topological quantum computer. We would initialize it by preparing pairs of anions and then perform a sequence of exchanges of the particles so that the world lines of the anions would trace out a braid in space time. And to read out the computer, we would bring the anions together in pairs and observe whether they annihilate one another and disappear or not. Well, what's beautiful about this idea is that the information that's being processed is very non-locally encoded and therefore protected from the damage that could be caused by decoherence. In principle, as long as the braid traced out by the world lines of the particles is the right braid, we'll do the right computation and get the right result. Well, at least that's how it's supposed to work. Now, the plight of the anion has been noted by the poets who have said, you and your buddy were made in a pair, then wandered around, braiding here, braiding there. You'll fuse back together when braiding is through. We'll bid you adieu as you vanish from view. Alexei exhibits a knack for persuading that someday we'll crunch quantum data by braiding with quantum states hidden where no one can see, protected from damage through topology. Anion, anion, where do you roam? Braid for a while before you go home. And this poem goes on too, but you get the idea. So this is the theorist version of computing with anions. Can we really make it work in a real physical system? Well, here too, there's an interesting story that involves three members of the Caltech faculty Alexei, Gil Raphael, and Jason Alisea. Alexei again started the ball rolling with a very stunning idea some time ago. He pointed out that it's possible under the right circumstances for an electron in a wire to split into two parts, for an electron in effect to be sawed in half. Well, what he told us was that if I have a wire in the quantum regime, there are really two types of wire an ordinary garden variety superconductor, and what we call a topological superconductor. And at the boundary between these two types of wire, there's an object we call a Majorana fermion, but you can think of it as being like half of an electron. And if we allow an electron to be absorbed by the topological superconductor, it sort of dissolves away and disappears, and thereby changes the state of these Majorana fermions. 
So in this way, there are really two different states, one with the extra electron added and one without. And locally, these states look the same. This is a topological encoding of information, the type that we can hide from the environment that we might want to use in a quantum computer. Well, originally, Kataev's idea was a rather mathematical proposal. He had a model in which this phenomenon would occur. And what Raphael and Alisea and others explain is how we can really make this practical by combining a semiconductor wire with a superconductor and some other clever tricks. And just in the past year or so, we've seen the first experimental evidence that an electron really can be absorbed by a topological superconductor and disappear, as I've described. But the experiments are still not definitive, and more experiments will be needed. If that is achieved, it'll be a real milestone for physics, apart from any long-term potential technological implications. Now, can we really use these Majorana fermions for computing? Well, here, too, Alisea and Raphael and others had an interesting idea, which is we can imagine a network of wires in which there are T-junctions. And if I want to exchange the positions of two of these Majorana fermions, I can do it in three steps. First, by using electric fields, move the Majorana fermion around the corner of the T-junction and park it then move the Majorana fermion that was initially on the right over to the left, and then unpark the first guy. And by that way, we have exchanged the positions of the two particles without them ever coming close to one another. That's just what we need to do to perform an operation on topologically encoded data. So that hasn't been done in experiments yet, but we're hopeful that it can be in the next few years. <laughs> 